Hi there, this is Steven Gonzalez. How are you doing today? Welcome to the first video in the version 2 Windows centric fundamental sequence for Reaper for Voice Talent. The purpose of this and the following videos is to let us journey together, taking a surface level view of Reaper from downloading and installing the program to recording a media item to saving and rendering projects. And so, with that, downloading Reaper. That's what's next on Reaper for Voice Talent. In this video, we're going to be looking at downloading Reaper as well as the Reaper website. It's just a cursory view of it, but enough for us to be getting along with. Then we're going to be looking at downloading the SWS extension. What exactly is it? How it fits in the big picture? That sort of thing. Then we're going to be looking at the user guides for both programs. And then finally, installing both programs. Now, in videos like this, there are usually caveats, which I guess a definition of caveat would be a warning which will keep things, I guess, from blindsiding us, right? And in this video, there are two. In future videos, if I do have caveats, they'll be here as well. So the first caveat for this video is this. Reaper is going to want to run after it's installed. We're going to have to tell it no, because we still have to install the SWS extension in this video. Plus, we have four other software packages, I'll call them enhancements, to, uh, to Reaper that we're going to be installing in the very next video. And then in the third video, we'll finally be able to run Reaper for the very first time. Now, the second caveat is a little less straightforward, and it has to do with Windows User Access Control window. This is that window that pops up whenever you try to install something and that may um, tweak something that's in a sensitive part of, of Windows. It's basically saying, hey, are you sure you want to do this? I've tried I don't know how many screen capture programs, and they all have one thing in common. They can hear the UAC, but they cannot see the UAC. So what's going to happen is I'm going to put up some kind of pop-up with, you know, UAC, something like this maybe. And when you hear that, you know, in Windows 7, it's like a clunk sound, and in Windows 10, it's this doo 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 kind of thing, you know? So the bottom line basically is whenever that thing pops up, I'm going to do that. And finally, if this is your first time in this video, especially if this is your first time in Reaper for Voice Talent, do me a favor and like this video, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell, setting it to all, and watch this video all the way through so that you don't miss a thing. And then finally, if you have any comments or questions, drop them in the comment section below, and that will be much appreciated, and I'll try to get to them. So with that, let's get started. Now, Reaper is not found at reaper.net, and it's not found at reaper.com. It's in fact found at reaper.fm, and this .fm should tell you something about Reaper. Any website that ends with a .fm is meant for multimedia, some sort of thing with multimedia, whether it's streaming multimedia or editing multimedia or processing it or whatever it happens to be. And Reaper is no different. After all, if you look at the Reaper website, anytime you see Reaper, it's in capital letters, right? And that's because Reaper is an acronym. It stands for the Rapid Environment of Audio Production, Engineering, and Recording. And that's exactly what Reaper allows us to do, all three of those. Now, let's take a look at the seven links in the main web pages banner. Okay, in the upper left-hand corner, we have Download Reaper, which we're going to get to in just a few moments. In the lower left-hand corner, we have Download User Guide, which we're going to get to in just a few minutes. Then we have Purchase. This has to do with Cocos's licensing system for Reaper. And Cocos is the company that puts out Reaper, and we're going to be getting into that whole thing in a future video. And then resources in the upper right-hand corner. This is what Reaper users call the stash. This has things like themes or uh, effects presets. And then you have these visually creative people that do this mock-up, a graphical mock-up of a suggestion that could be implemented in the future versions of Reaper. And just awesome. Very cool place to hang out. And then finally, we have the videos and the forum. Now, <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm going to say this in the fundamental sequence. Always remember that Reaper is meant primarily as a music production software package. So is Pro Tools. So is Audition. So is Studio One. And the videos and the forum section in this website is geared toward music production. However, that shouldn't dissuade you from going into there. There are still some things in there that is really, really applicable to voice talent, and it's well worth the read. 
Now that's six links. Where's the seventh link? Well, it's this guitar pick. Anytime you see this banner on the top of a Reaper web page and you click on this guitar pick, you're brought back to this, the top page of the Reaper.fm website. Let's talk about downloading Reaper. So when we click on this, we're greeted with this web page. Now you'll see Windows on the left and Mac on the right and Linux here. My dear fellow Linux users, let me speak with you for a second. I am an RHCE, and you know, you, we should know that being a Linux user, experimentation is a way of life, right? So I have experimented with these builds, and I've also experimented with Windows 64 bit and Wine 64. And both of them work a treat. The issue comes with third party add ons and VSTs and things like that. And you're just going to have to experiment with them to see what works for you in your own distro. Now, my dear fellow Windows users, I'm going to be using the 64 bit environment. And so we hit the uh, button and we save it to our desktop. Now, let's talk about the SWS extension for Reaper for a second. Now, what exactly is a Standing Waters Studios extension for Reaper? Anything you do within, well, almost anything you do within Reaper is what's known as an action. You could be something as simple as, you know, starting a new project or maybe recording a new media item or maybe trimming the left edge of that media item or maybe something even as esoteric as, say, inserting two points each at the beginning and the end of a time selection for the pre-volume effects envelope within a track. And yes, there is such a thing. And yes, I use it all the time. So those are actions. And there's a bazillion of them. Now, the SWS extension adds to that extensive actions list. And some of these actions that it provides are extremely useful for voice talent. In fact, most Reaper users who think that Reaper is a great DAW think that the SWX extension completes Reaper and makes it into a superior DAW. And that's why we're going to be downloading it. So we hit download and we hit save file and again to the desktop and that's downloading. Now let's talk about those user guides for a second. Inside Reaper, we can click on this lower left-hand link and we're greeted with this web page. At the time of this recording, the Reaper user guide is somewhere around 420 pages. Now. Don't let that extensive page number really get you. Most of the stuff that's in there, again, is geared toward music production. However, there's lots of stuff that's in this RUG that really will help you out a great deal. In fact, I would dare say that as far as questions and answers are concerned, probably the RUG would be able to answer, I guess, about 80% of your questions. And then the videos and forum, another, say, 10 to 15. And then the rest... You just have to Google it. And my point is this, don't reinvent the wheel. If you have a question about Reaper, chances are somebody else has already had that question and you can learn from that experience, whether it's the Reaper user guide, the videos and forum or Google. Now to download the Reaper user guide, we can right click inside this rectangle and we can say save link as or save file as or whatever it happens to be, right? Now, and we save it wherever we want. Now, I've already got the RUG, so I'm not going to you know, do it again. An interesting read would be the what's new. Sometimes there are new things within Reaper that really affect and can really streamline, in fact, the workflow within Reaper for a voice talent. One of the most magnificent things about Reaper is that they listen to the people. When the people say, look, you know, I'm having difficulty with this. What can you can you redesign it to do that? Can you make this checkbox and then it'll, you know, help me out a great deal? Or as I said before in the uh, stash, the people who mock up those visual suggestions, that's the kind of stuff that Kakos takes and says, okay, how do we do this? So it's a wonderful, wonderful system. So this is what this particular file will show you. It's what's the difference between the previous version and the current version of Reaper. Now, topic-specific guides, here's a quick start, and it has many, many things, including some keyboard shortcuts, and talking about that, if you look in the description below, you're gonna find a link to a document that has keyboard shortcuts for the actions that voice talent use all the time. Now, you can change those keyboard shortcuts, but this is just Reaper out of the box, 
and these are the actions that I'm talking about. Now, let's talk about the Reaper troubleshooting guide. If you're having difficulty either installing or running Reaper, go in there first and see if it solves your issue. If not, then go to the Reaper forum and say, hey, I've got an issue. Many forum users will say, hey, did you see the troubleshooting guide first? Now, the reaffects guide. Anytime that we have something to do with Reaper, it's always prefixed with REA. I love it. Now, it's exactly what it says. It's the effects guide for Reaper. Things like EQs and compression and downward expansion and limiting and all that good stuff. Here is something that is absolutely wonderful with Reaper. The multiple recording paths capability. Imagine this. You're in your booth and you are recording your project. Your primary storage facility goes south for some reason. It goes offline, it breaks, whatever. Multiple recording path says, well, with that one session, I'm going to save that audio in two different places. So that way, if there is a problem with one of the disks, at least the other disk has what the session recorded. And this explains how to do it. And then finally, for those of you who are former uh, Sonar users, this is an equivalence guide of how to jump from Sonar to Reaper. Okay, that's all the user guides for Reaper. Let's talk about the SWS extension. Again, down here, we have a manual that is again written by Jeffrey Francis, does a wonderful job. Again, right click on the link and say save link as, save file as, whatever, and you can save it wherever you want to go. And again, there are a bunch of actions that the SWS extension provides that's well worth the read inside the user manual. By the way, real quick, just a side note, maybe you are a little sharp-eyed here and you can see these four tabs here. This is a sneak peek into what we're gonna be covering in the next video. The Repack add-on, the TDR Nova EQ, the Vox & Go Span VST plugin, and the TB Pro Audio DP Meter 4. So when we get to the next video, I'll explain all of those now, let's talk about installing these things. Here we have the two installers. We're going to start with Reaper first, and we're going to be getting to our second caveat here in just a second. Now, this is what's known as the End User License Agreement, or the EULA. Now, this is legal reading. It, I agree. And then this is the uh, location, okay? Here's the UAC. Okay, I hit yes. And now here we have the components window you'll see that the required files uh, checkbox is grayed out because, of course, we need the required files. But notice this second checkbox as compared to the other three. You notice how it has a plus here and that it's got a darker background than the other three. This plus means that it has subcomponents, and the darker background means that at least one of the subcomponents is not checked. So let's find out which one it is and see if we need it. And we find that it's a reroute ASIO driver. In the third video, we're going to be going over what an ASIO driver is. For reroute, to be honest, 98% of voice talent probably will never have to have reroute, so it's okay to keep it empty here. So we hit install. Reaper's going to think about it, and then all of a sudden, swish, and like that, Reaper is installed. And it creates an icon to the desktop you see here. Now we're going to hit close, and we're going to look at the first caveat. This thing. Reaper's asking if we want to run it now, and the answer is going to be no because of this installer and the next video as well. In the previous version of the fundamental sequence, I said, Welcome to the fastest and easiest installation that you'll ever see in your life, and it has not changed. We double click. Here's the UAC. I'm going to wait for it to catch up. Okay, there we go. The EULA, the location, install, and like that, it's done. Boom. In the next video, we're going to be covering those four optional software packages that enhances Reaper even more. Now, in the description below, there will be links to Reaper's website, to the SWS Extensions website, to the Windows-centric Fundamental Sequence playlist, to the Mac-centric Windows Sequence playlist, and finally, the link to that document with all those keyboard shortcuts I described before. Now, this is Stephen Gonzalez with Stephen Gonzalez VoiceOvers, wishing y'all all the best, and y'all have a wonderful and wonder-filled day.